Hi guys, it is the third day of my reading and today's story is called The Count in the Wedding Guest One evening when Andy Donovan, Donovan went to dinner uh, at his Second Avenue Broad house uh, Mrs. Scott introduced him to a young lady Miss Conway Miss Conway was a small and unob unobtrusive she wore a plain brown dress she lifted her different no one politely murmured his name and returned to the mot to, to her mot mot motto after the introduction she didn't speak to Andy Donovan Mr. Donovan bowed with the grace and forgave Miss Conway almost at once. Two weeks later, Andy was sitting on the front steps enjoying his cigar. Suddenly, somebody came out. Andy turned his head and he had his turn, his head turned. Miss Conway was coming out the door. She wore a night black dress. Her head was black and from it dropped and fluttered, fluttered a black veil. She stood on the top step and drew on the black silk gloves. Not a, not a speck, not a speck of white or a spot of color, or a spot of color. Her, her face was plain, but it was not now beautiful. Her large grey eyes blazed above the houses across the street into the sky with an expression of sadness and melancholy. All black and sad for a look and her hair shining under the black veil. Mr. Donovan threw away his unfinished cigar and quickly stood up. It's a fine clear evening, Miss Conway, he said. Yes, it is, Miss Mr. Donald, but it's not for me," said Miss Conway with a sigh. "I hope none of your relatives. Hope. I hope none of your relatives. I hope you haven't sustained the loss," ventured Mr. Donald. "Not a relative," said Miss Conway, hesitating. "I have no friends or." Acquaintances, acquaintances in the city, but you have been kind to me. I appreciate it highly. It's tough to be alone in New York," said Mister Don Juan. "Would you like to take a walk in the park, Miss Conway? Don't you think it might be a chase?" away from your troubles. Thanks, Mr. Donovan. I'd be pleased to accept your invitation. They walked through the open gates of the old downtown park and found a quiet, a quiet bench. <sighs> he was my fiance, 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 said Miss Conway. At the end of an hour, we were going to be married next spring. Uh, he was a real count. He had a he had an estate and a castle in Italy. Count Fernando Mazzini was his name. My father objected, of course, and once we eloped, but our father overtook us and took us back. Finally, fa father agreed and said we might be married next spring. Fernandez showed him proofs of his of his title and wealth and then went to Italy to prepare a castle for us. My father is very proud and he never let me take a ring uh, or any presents from him. When Fernandez sailed, I came to the city and got a position as cashier in the candy store, in the candy store. Three days ago, I got a letter from Italy saying that Fernando was killed. 
in a gondola accident. That is why I'm in the morning. My heart, Mr. Donovan, will remain forever in his grave. I guess I'm poor company, Mr. Donovan. Perhaps you would like, perhaps you would prefer to walk back to, to the house. I'm awful, I, I'm awfully sorry, said Mr. Donovan gently. No, we won't walk back to the house just yet. And don't say you have no friends in the city, Miss Conway. I'm sorry, and I want you to believe I'm your friend. I've got his picture. I've got his picture here in my locket, said Miss Conway after wiping her eyes with her with her hand handkerchief. I never showed it to anybody, but I will. But I will to you. Mr. Donovan, because I believe you to be a true friend. Mr. Donovan glazed along, glazed long and with much Easter and inter interest at the photo photograph in the locket that Miss Conway opened for him. The face of Count Mazzini was a smooth, intelligent, bright, almost a handsome face. The face of a strong, cheerful man who might be a leader among his fellows. I have, I have a larger one, frame it in my room, said Miss Conway. When we return, I will show you. I'll show you that. They are all I have to remind me of Fernanda, but he, but he ever will be present in my heart, but he ever will be present in my heart. That sympathetic but cheerful friend was the role Mr. Donald play, played. And he played it so successfully that soon they were sitting in a cafe eating ice cream through Miss Conway's large grey eyes were set. When they came into the hall of the boarding, boarding house, she ran up to her room and brought down the framed photograph of the man. Mr. Donovan surveyed, surveyed, surveyed it with inscr inscrutable eyes. He gave me this. He gave me this. The night he left for Italy, said Miss Conway. Fine-looking man said Mr. Donald heartily. May I ask you to give me the pleasure of your company to the th theater theater next Sunday afternoon. A smooth uh, a month later they announced their engagement engagement. Miss Conway continued to wear wear black. A week after the announcement two the two sat on the same bench in the downtown park park it was a fine clear night the moon stone brightly on the green leaves everything around them was very nice but donovan was silent all day he was silent what's the matter andy you are so sullen and grouchy tonight nothing maggie I know better. What is it? It's nothing much, Maggie. Yes, it is. And I want to know. I'll bet it's some other girl you're thinking about. All right. Why don't you go, go get her if you want her. Take your arm away, if you please. I tell you then, said Andy wisely. But I guess you won't understand it exactly. You've heard of Mike Sullivan, haven't you? But Big Mike Sullivan, everybody calls him. No, I haven't, said Maggie. Who is he? Who is he? He's the biggest man in New York, said Andy, almost. Reverently. Rever reverently. Reverently. Well, Big, Mike, Big Mike's a friend of mine. 
makes as good a friend to a little man makes as good a friend to a little man or a poor man as he is to big one to a big one i met him to two day and what do you think he does comes up and shakes hands i told him i was going to get married in two weeks and he says he send me an invitation and i will come to this to the wedding that's what big mike says to me and he always does what he says you don't understand it maggie but if big mike Sullivan comes to our wedding it will be the proudest day of my life why don't you invite him said maggie lightly there is there is there is a reason why i can't said andy said we there is a reason why I, why he mustn't be there don't ask me what it is don't ask me what it is for i can i can't tell you but you must tell me everything maggie do you love me as much as you loved your count mazzini he waited a long time but maggie did not reply didn't reply and then suddenly she learned le limped against his shoulder and began to cry holding his arm tightly what is it now andy sobbed maggie i've lied to you and you will never marry me or love me anymore but I feel that I must tell you everything, Andy. There is there was no count in my life. I never had a lover in my life, but all the other girls had. And then and they talked about them, but nobody loved me. At least I thought of a plan. I look well in black. I went out to a photograph store and bought that picture. The photographer made a little one for my locket too and i invited that story about and i and i invented that story about the count and about the his gondola accident so i could wear black and nobody can love a liar and you will leave me andy and i'll die for shame Oh, there never was anybody I liked but you. And that's all. But instead of leaving her, and his arm was holding her closer. She looked up and saw his face cleared and smiling. Could you could you forgive me, Andy? Sure, said Andy. It's all right about that. Andy, said Maggie. With a shy smile. Did you believe I told that story about the count? Well, not all of it, said Andy, reaching for the reaching for his cigarette case, because in your locket, it's a big, big Mike Sullivan's picture. Okay, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.